I have this small 24 inch wide sink that really doesn't allow me to fit much on its surface at all. So I ran to the hardware store and picked up some wood. Once I got home, I determined how high I wanted my shelf to be. I have a pretty high faucet, so I needed to make mine pretty tall. You'll adjust yours to the height that's appropriate for you. I cut my wood to the appropriate length. Then I simply placed the two pieces of wood together using an L bracket. I didn't want the rough edge of the wood to show on top of my shelf, so I made sure to attach the L bracket in a way that the rough edge stayed underneath the top part of the shelf. I set it into place and started playing around with how I wanted to organize my things on this new shelf. You could also, of course, finish this to your desired look. You could stain the wood or paint it or whatever goes great in your bathroom. I used two tension rods for this brilliant storage solution. I placed them between my washing machine and wall, which is an awkward, unused space. I made sure they were both level and then I got a piece of wood to fit on top. I trimmed another scrap piece of wood for the front and I used a brad nailer to secure them together. I grabbed shelf liner from the dollar store and stuck it to the wood to make it look like one large thick board. I trimmed the edges and placed it on top of the tension rods and now I have a solution for more storage in my laundry room that actually looks good. I hope this inspires you to make use of those awkward spaces and make these easy tension rod shelves. Pick up a couple of bins and these barn wood boards at Walmart. These boards are already prepped and ready to go. We just need to remove the twine from the back. Now I wanna add a little detail to this. So I'm gonna use just a paper number stencil and I'm gonna add a stencil number to the top of each board. To the bottom, I wanna add a little knob. Now, if you're using thicker wood, you can absolutely drill a hole and use the screw that comes with these knobs. Since this is very thin wood, I'm just gonna use some super glue to attach it. Now I wanna place the board on the bin. The bin doesn't sit completely flat against the board, so I'm using some thick Gorilla mounting tape on the clear bin, and then I'm gonna press the board on there really well. You can either set something heavy on top of this or use clamps to hold it in place for about 30 minutes until it cures. And I'm gonna hide some craft supplies that don't really fit anywhere else. I have this beautiful clean look on the outside, and I can easily access everything I need when I pull these out. I hope this inspired you to grab some bins and use this creative way to hide some of your items. I grabbed this towel rod for the best kitchen hack. I used a stud finder to locate the studs. I wanted to drill at least one end of the towel rack into the studs. I put one end of the towel rack on, placed the level on top, and marked where the other side of the towel rack needed to be so that the rod would be level. For this side, I used drywall anchors to ensure a strong hold. Then I grabbed some black shower curtain rings, placed them on the towel rack, and hung my favorite cutting boards and frying pan. Now I have modern kitchen decor that was so quick and easy. Grab some pegboard hooks and shelves from your local dollar store and buy some inexpensive pegboards. Do you have leftover peel and stick wallpaper from wallpapering a wall or other project? Lay your wallpaper face down on a table and position the pegboards on the paper with a few inches of space between each pegboard. Outline each pegboard with a pencil and cut out each piece of wallpaper, including an additional inch outside the outline. With some sharp scissors, cut out the corners of the wallpaper. Peel the backing off the wallpaper and lay the pegboard face down on the sticky side of the paper. Press down firmly so you know the wallpaper is sticking. Wrap the outer edges of the wallpaper up and over the side edges of the pegboard. Take a screwdriver, pencil, or other poker type object and poke holes through the wallpaper and into the pegboard holes. You can do this for feeling for the pegboard holes with your finger or by holding it up to the light to see the hole. Hang the pegboard with the hardware provided so it is secure on the wall. Line up with the wallpaper pattern on your wall with the covered pegboard. The hardest part is sometimes matching up the pattern on the wall, but once you find it, it is so fun to line it up and see the pegboard disappear into the matching pattern. Insert the pegboard hooks into the wallpapered pegboard to hold your keys. Or hang a pegboard shelf to hold dryer sheets in your laundry room. Style with pretty home decor or use to store functional items. Or both. I hope this inspired you to create some inexpensive and stylish storage. Run down to the hardware store and grab a stick of oak. This is a one by two by nine foot long. 
also going to get some of these command hooks. They're great and non-permanent. I have this end piece on my cabinet on the top and the bottom, and I know there's something I can do with it. First thing I'm going to do is measure my cabinets. I'm going to make a couple of marks at 31 inches. I'm going to cut two of these boards at this size. If I need to go ahead and sand the edges, I'll do that. The next two are going to be the top cuts, and those are going to be cut at 20 inches and 3 quarters. I'm going to go ahead and join those up, but first, I want to put some glue on the end. That's going to make this joint super strong. So all it takes is a little glue on the end, and then I'm going to use some brad nails. Two of those inside will work just fine. Once I get those all done, it's a strong joint. No worries about it breaking. And I'm going to size up all four of them. I'm going to put a railing down the middle. I did run out of oak, so I had to use some pine wood. Once I get that done, I'm going to go up about five and a half inches and measure across because I'm going to put a railing on. Again, I had to use some pine wood for this. And once I get that on, it just takes one brad nail on each side to hold it together. Now, once I got those on and it's super strong, I need to use some pre-stained wood conditioner. When you're using pine, it's a soft wood, unlike oak, which is a hardwood. When I go to stain the pine, it's going to be all blotchy. So only on the pine do I need to take this pre-stain and put it on. It doesn't take much. Just one little dip was able to do the whole thing. Let this dry about 30 minutes and then come back and we're going to stain it. Now, my cabinets had kind of an orangey color to it, so I went with a maple look. I could have gone with pecan, but maple seems to be the closest match. I'm going to cover all the sides of the boards, make sure I get the oak and the pine and all the ends. Now it's time to hook it up, put it together. Look at that color. It matches pretty good. I'm going to use just a few of those brad nails that go through the boards and into the cabinets, and it's going to hold it on. Once I get all of those on and it's ready and adhered nice, I'm going to take those command strips. They're easy to use. You just got to peel off the back on one, put it on the hook, and then make sure it's nice and secure, and then peel off the other edge. Then you can take it and put it on the cabinet. I'm going to go ahead and put two of these on, and they're actually really great. They stick good. They're also removable and not permanent. Now take your family cookbook or any book that you like, put it in there. I'm going to use some of those oven mitts. That's what that railing was all about. And then I'm going to use those command strips and hooks to put on some of the utensils that I use the most. And I tell you what, this thing turned out so well and the color matched so good it almost looks like it was built in. I think it turned out great and I'm actually really happy with it. My wife has always been wanting some more storage space in the laundry room. It starts with this little gap between the washer and the dryer. I need some 1x8s and 1x3s. Then I need to measure in between the washer and dryer to get the width. This one seems to be 24 inches. And then I need to get the height, and it's exactly 36 inches. So let's start measuring and cutting boards. We're going to cut two boards of the 1x8s at 32 and a half. Once we get both of those boards cut, what we're going to then do is go ahead and mark the next boards, and we're going to mark two of those at 24 inches. And then we need two more on the 1x8s at 22 and a half. We're going to take all these boards and cut them. Now, I'm using my miter saw. You can definitely use a jigsaw if you need to also. Once we get the front and the back cut, these are the longer boards. We're going to put the bottom on. This is our first 24-inch board. Now, I like to use my little brad nailer. You can definitely use screws if you want, but again, I will always say make sure you pre-drill, especially towards the ends of the boards. If you pre-drill, you're less likely to split the boards. Now, once we get the bottom on, we're going to put the middle shelf on. I'm going to go 17 inches from the top. That's going to give me enough room to put some items on there and not worry if I'm running out of room or not. Again, I'm using the brad nailer to put this board in. Now, every shelf is going to need a little barrier to keep everything in. So, what we're going to do is cut these 1x3s that I got. We're going to put those on the inside. Now, if you're sick of measuring, just use each board, the first one you cut, and use it to mark and cut the rest. Every shelf is going to need a little board on each side. That's going to hold our items in. Again, using that brad nailer. Once I put that first side piece in on the bottom shelf, I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to put the next one on. Also, I'm going to nail it from the bottom. That's going to make it super strong. Now, some of these cuts don't line up exactly perfect. That's okay, because we're going to sand it later. Once you run that sander up and down, it's going to get those edges nice and smooth. A lot of this wood is rough. That's okay. Once we get that on, on the bottom, we're going to put some wheels. 
definitely need four of them. Now these are caster wheels. Again, since we're towards the edge of the board, make sure you pre-drill. And we want to make sure the screws we put in are not too long. There's nothing worse than those popping out at the bottom. Once we get that wheel on, it's going to be perfect. Look how it spins just like this. It's great. Now for the top. That's the last board we got, and it's 24 inches. And I got a surprise. We're going to put a hinge on the back. As you can tell, this is definitely the back of the board just because of that little blemish on that piece of wood right there. Once we get that hinge on, look at that. I've got a little hiding shelf right there. Now, what I need to do is sand it. A lot of these boards feel smooth, but we want to sand them because they got a little bit of a film on them. So run some 80 grit, then up to 220, run it up and down the sides and make it look nice. And then you can either paint or put your favorite stain on. I like to stain it with a rag. It makes it go on and nice and even for me. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to get this all stained up. I'm going to put a handle on it and it's time to put it in place. And just look at that. It fits right in between the washer and the dryer. And with that handle, I can pull it out and store all my items there. Now, the best part about that little hidden spot on top is you don't have to pull it out every time. This is gonna have our pods and we can also grab our dryer sheets so we're not pulling it out between every load. I hope this inspired you to build your own laundry room extra storage container. Thank you for watching Home Talk and we'll catch you next time.